Okay, for our last part for this activity, we're going to make this, um, this Automoblox female, and we're going to use the Automoblox project and create a new IPT. Now this one here, this uh, particular set of directions, for the most part it has dimensions except for one dimension which is the uh, extrusion of the triangular base and because it wants you to use measurements that you may have obtained in a previous activity and it does give dimensions on most of the other sketch points uh, and it says they're for reference but really we're going to use them uh, as our reference uh, as it may be. So okay, so we'll do a sketch, we'll do it on the XZ plane here and we're going to use the polygon tool and create an equilateral triangle. Alternatively we can just use three lines and set them all equal to each other and add dimensions later. But we'll go ahead and use the polygon tool. Let's don't forget to use the uh, make the polygon before you close the window. Okay, so here's the triangle. Good. All right, and I made it coincident with the origin. Uh, you can or you can choose to or choose not to, up to you. Um, I'm going to make a dimension here, and I'm just going to kind of go with the sketch that's provided here. We want a distance from here to here, and we want that horizontal distance to be 0.556 inches. Okay, and then we're going to restrict and make this a vertical line. There we go. And we kind of, you know, I'm just kind of going based on the profile uh, that's on uh, on the on the uh, sketch. And we're going to go ahead now and make an ellipse. Now, careful here. This is not a circle. You got to look very carefully and see that it's not a circle. And we're going to make that ellipse, and we're actually going to make it the center of the triangle as well. And we'll make an ellipse just like that. And we're going to dimension it. And remember, when we dimension an ellipse, we're going to be able to define either the major or the minor axis, okay, depending on the direction and where that mouse is. It'll tell you which one we're going to be making. So in this case, the minor axis is 0.105. At least the center of that minor axis is actually 0.21, but that's okay. And then we're going to go ahead and do the other uh, major axis. And this major axis is going to be 0.125 or 0.25 for the whole thing. 0.125 from the uh, end of the center. Okay, so ellipse is there. We're good. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to extrude. We're actually going to keep that. We're going to need to share this sketch once we extrude it. Uh, we're going to extrude and we're going to extrude the whole thing. And we're going to go, it doesn't say the, the size here, but we'll use a quarter of an inch. We'll use a quarter of an inch on there. Um, and I just just occurred to me, I want to make, actually I want to, I just hit the undo key, I want to actually extrude in the opposite direction. And I want to make sure I select this circle as well. And uh, the reason I want to go is because I want this to be here and I want the bottom of it down, down here and I want to make the body parts up here. Okay, so we hit OK. And let's go ahead and share the sketch. Remember, we right-click the sketch in the browser bar and we select Share Sketch, and that allows us to use it in other profiles. Okay, the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to make an offset work plane. Okay, and we're going to what we're going to be doing is a series of lofts, and we're actually going to do all of the lofts at the same time, as opposed to having to do two separate lofts. So we're going to select Offset from Plane, and we're going to select the top of the sketch, and we want to offset this a distance of Let's see. Um, it says here we're going to get a new sketch larger. Do all right. We'll go. Uh, it wants us to kind of use our, our best guess here. We're actually going to use a. Um, uh, let's go another quarter inch. So 0.25. Okay. And we'll create the sketch on the top here on this particular plane. So we'll go up to the sketch, use the work plane we just created, and we're going to project the geometry of the ellipse onto that work plane and we're going to create an offset ellipse. So we hit the offset tool, remember we've used this a couple of times, and let's go, we're, we can resize this right about now, and according to this, it wants us to use a minor axis of 0 0.110, and remember we hit the ellipse, not the side, oops, I made that mistake, back to dimension, we hit the ellipse, and we're going to go, uh, actually, yeah, I hit the wrong ellipse, <laughs> I want to use the one I just created. Um, let's see here. Well, okay, it wants us to use an offset dimension as, as opposed to a... Okay, well, we can work with that. So, all we have to do is just do a little bit of math here. And because we created an offset ellipse rather than creating its own, their, our own ellipse, we have to um, dimension the distance between them, which is fine. So, because they're dependent sketches, and that's why. So, it wants us to make 0 0.110 for the minor. Well, if it was 0 0.105 on there, some quick math would say that that's going to be 0 0.05. Okay? And that's for the uh, distance here. And then on the bottom here, I'm pretty sure it's not going to. Let's see. Let's see if it'll let us do over here.
here as well. And we might have to actually, yeah, okay, we're gonna have to use the, rather than creating an offset ellipse, we're going to create our own ellipse. But we'll make the centers coincident. Okay, so again, we'll just, you know, we'll leave that change in the video because, again, it's very important to see. Sometimes you just need a little bit of trial and error. Okay, so center of the ellipse, ellipse here, we'll go um, major axis of 0 0.140. Okay, and don't worry, worry about that, that's okay. And then we'll go minor axis of 0.125. Okay, there we go. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so we did that. Now, we're going to create another sketch, and we're going to, we're going to go ahead and do another work plane above that. Okay, actually, we're going to go ahead and actually put another ellipse on here instead of, uh, um, I'm just looking at the sketch, instead of actually doing it first, we're actually going to do the, uh, the ellipse of the body here as well. And uh, what it tells us here is that the ellipse at the hem and the ellipse at the waist, and we're going to use those dimensions to kind of um, uh, to do these these measurements first. So now, because it tells us the major and minor axes total lengths on the sketch, and this is on page 12, by the way, um, we're going to cut those dimensions in half when we dimension this larger ellipse. So this actually is going to be um, this is. Let me make sure we got this right. Point two. And we're going to make the major axis 0.4. No, 0.3, excuse me, half of 0.6. Okay, so that's good. And now, the reason we did that is because we want to make it so that uh, we're going to create a loft feature from here to here, and then we're going to use this as a new loft. And like I said, we're going to kind of do it all at once. So we're going to kind of outline this, uh, this feature based on this. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create another offset work plane. We're going to actually offset it from this work plane. And <clears throat> let me just make sure we're doing this right. Offset from plane. OK, don't forget to select offset from plane. Otherwise, you're just going to overlap the two. And we're going to go 0.36 higher, because that's the distance to the next one. And then we'll go ahead and put a sketch on this new work plane and see how we're kind of getting this nice uh, overlay of, of, of work planes here. And uh, we'll project the geometry of the uh, uh, actually, let's see if we can do it. We don't we might not have to. Uh, okay, no, we don't have to. So we, we'll, we'll skip the project geometry tool this time. And now this time we're going to make an ellipse, and we're going to make it uh, 0.31 by 0.39, so half of 0.31. Actually, remember, we can have the, have the software do the math for us if we want, right? So we can type in 0.31. Um, sorry, this is, I'm going 0.39. This is the major axis. Uh, divide that by 2. See, it does the math for us, right? So, and I'll do this, and obviously we're getting a lot of, a lot of numbers on this particular sketch. It's going to get worse, so hang, hang in there. 0 0.31 divided by two. Okay, so that acts. And then what I did was I just took the dimensions that were in the middle, uh, or, or the dimensions of the ellipse at waist, as it as it's described, and I just cut those numbers in half to get the distance from the center to the sides for major and minor spots. Okay, so now I finish the sketch, and then when we look at it from the side, you can kind of see the outline of what we're going to be doing. We're going to create a little pedestal here. And then this is going to be out here, and we're going to loft to this, and then we're going to create another work plane and loft to that uh, sketch as well. So speaking of which, let's go ahead and do that. Offset from plane, and we're going to go 0.34 higher. So we get another spot all the way up here. And then, yep, another sketch going on here using the same center. Same center, another ellipse. Now this time it gives us whole dimensions, but again, we still got to cut those in half uh, when, we, when we dimension, because when I, we dimension the ellipse, we go major and minor. And I'm going to go to this side, because this side is a little less frequently used. So uh, this distance is going to be, let's see, 0.76 divided by 2. Oops, 0.76 divided by 2. There we go. And then one more dimension to add in there, and that's the minor axis. And that's going to be 0.54 divided by 2. OK. All right. Finish the sketch, and here we go. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the loft on the bottom. And I'm pretty sure that it's, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to chain them enough that I can do all of the lofts at the same time. I can try. And I think I'm going to. And I'm going to give it a shot. OK. So the first thing we got to do is we're going to add. Now what are we adding? We're going to add this from this sketch right here. We're going to add this feature right there. 
Okay, that's sketch one. Now we click to add. Now we're going to go to the next sketch. Remember we're on this sketch, but this time we're going to select. We've got to be very careful. We have to zoom in a little bit here. We want to set, select this part right there. Okay, no preview yet. Now click to add. We're going to add another of the same. Uh, okay, so yeah, it's not so okay. I take that back. So it's not going to let us because we want to use something that's in the same exact sketch. So it's not going to let us do that. So that's okay. We're going to actually just go ahead and do the loft for that first part. We're going to share that sketch, the second one, because we're going to use it again. Okay. Um, where is it? Sketch two. All right. I want to make sure. Okay. It is shared already. So go to loft. Here and I thought it was just shared. Click to add. All right. I guess I. Okay, hold on a sec. We gotta make sure we are sharing that sketch. Is it shared? Edit the sketch properties visibility. Let's make visibility. Okay, let's try that. Okay, that worked. That worked. Okay, click to add. We're gonna add this section right here. See how it's kind of curving it right now? We want the output. Well, actually, let me try that. Okay, see, that's not that's not what I want. I don't want a curved set of features. So let's try that again. We want it to kind of be a. Okay, wait a minute. Now we're just trying. Okay, let's try that again. Click to add. Select sketch two. Okay, sketch two is added. Click to add. Okay, let's try that again. Sketch two. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know why it's not letting me. Oh, because I didn't select the, the solid part. That's why. Silly me. Okay. Now let's sketch that. Okay, so now it's there, right? So this is actually the, 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 the geometry we want. So I guess that if I go ahead and select this next sketch here, that it doesn't... Yeah, see how it kind of curves that? We don't want that. That's not what we want. So let's delete that sketch and let's add them one at a time then. Okay, so we're going to add that one more time and then I have to again make sketch three visible. And it's the same, almost the same thing as sharing it. And then select that and let's select here and we hit okay. So that's the, what we want, right? That's what we're looking for. Okay, now one more thing to do here. We're not quite done. We got to make a. Um, we got to do a work axis and a work plan, I should say, and we want to make it. Um, let's see here. Yeah, we're gonna have to make a work axis first, and we want to make it so that it's through. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Now what we do here is remember that we 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 uh, select the face and then we move our mouse, our mouse up, and that creates the work axis. Okay. Now we're gonna create a work plane. And we're going to select the, oops, let me make sure I'm doing that correctly. Parallel through the plane, through a point, no, that's not what I want. I want to make a um, normal to axis to the point, that's what I want right there. Okay, and that'll allow me to create a sketch on here. Let me make sure I'm doing that right. Nope, not quite. Okay. So I want to make sure I got that you know, plane around edge, three points, two coplanar points, normal to axis through point. All right. Okay, let me make sure I've got that. Let's select, select the work axis. And then that's what I'm supposed to do. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so I got to do, I select the axis, and then I'm going to select an edge that's vertical. Just like that, you kind of have to move around through it, right? You can kind of go through the side of the surface here, through the other side. But basically, I'm looking for it to be that vertical plane, so it cuts through all the other planes, and that's what I'm looking for. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to do a sketch that is vertical, and that's going to allow me, in this case, it's horizontal, but I can just, you know, do that. I want to make another head, right? So this one's going to have another head, and I'm going to use a very similar tool to create the head of this, just like I used in the. Um, 
in the automobox mail. So I'm going to create a line, and here's that work axis, right? I'm going to create a line, and it's going to be vertical. And I started it at the surface, right, at the top there. And I'm going to make this a construction line because this is going to be my revolution axis, just like I, I'm creating the head basically the exact same way that I created it in the previous, um, uh, like I said, the automobox mail. So I'm going to use a three-point arc. You go 90 degrees, 90 degrees. All right, and then um, I think I want to make that a little bigger. That's going to be too narrow of a head. So I'm going to make that. I'm going to make a line first. Jut it out a little bit, and then I will make the uh, three-point arc. So we got that, and let's go right about here. And you know, there's no exact, you know, exact way to make this head. Um, you can, you know, feel free to be a little creative here if you'd like. All right, I'm gonna make sure that I sketch a closed loop. For this, and I want that to be. Oops, no, nope, no, nope, not that one. Try again. Line, bottom. There we go. Okay, that's good. And then just again a three-point arc from here to here, ish. All right, that's good. Like I said, there's no exact science to it. Don't feel bad if you don't do it the same way. And notice how I'm not doing any dimensions, and that's all right. So revolve, a profile. And our, oops, is it going to let me select that axis? Okay, I know why, because I got a, I thought I, I thought I did that correctly, and I did not. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, I thought I made a construction line here, but let's try it by making a regular closed loop. Now we'll finish the sketch. Now we'll do the revolve. And let's select the, oh, I forgot to select the axis button. That's all it was. So I didn't have to do what I just did there when I added the line to the construction line. I didn't have to do that. I just forgot to select the axis button. So that's all my fault. Okay. And that's it now. Okay. Now you're looking at this going, well, it's really hard to see. This is a really big head. Whoops. <laughs> that's okay. Um, again, there's no exact science. You can make it a little smaller next time. I'll make it a little smaller next time if I do it again. Um, and now you see how there's all these planes and we're still seeing all these sketches, right? Well. I know that for a fact that we can kind of go through these and we can uncheck visibility each time, but I'm willing to bet there's probably a way that you can do the visibility or check uncheck the visibility of all sketches simultaneously. And I uh, right now I just want to make sure that we created the part and you can see the whole finished product. Uh, I've still got a couple of work planes. I got to uncheck visibility on one more to go and that's it okay so as you can see the disproportionately large head on this particular female um, body I do apologize for that sorry ladies uh, but it works it's there and that's fine okay so you've finished 55b if you've made it all the way this far don't forget when you submit the conclusion questions you gotta make sure you answer all the conclusion questions and ignore the fact that it's one two seven on the back I just kind of noticed that myself um, and also remember that when you submit the parts not only gonna submit images in a word document you're also gonna submit the IPT files uh, because we've had a couple of bouts of plagiarism and want to make sure that um, that you're doing the work that you're supposed to be doing so okay that's it have a nice day